Welcome to your Daily Five for Thursday, June 20th, 2024. You may have seen mention here or there that there was an update, I want to say a week or two ago, to Adobe's Terms of Service that govern their cloud, uh, creative cloud products that included some language that people were not happy about. Now, I, I did not read every word of the Terms of Service because I'm not a lawyer, so I'm relying on others' interpretation, and there is some level of interpretation here. But what people got upset about was there was wording and language that suggested that Adobe would be able to scan not only content that creators had made stored in their cloud storage, because with their creative cloud products, a lot of them come with a certain amount of cloud storage where you can send things up to the Adobe cloud and then access them from different machines, but also local files stored on individuals' personal computers and machines. Now, I've seen some debate over whether the wording actually said that or not, but let's assume that it did, or that at the very least it was ambiguous enough that some people read it as implying that. And there was an immediate amount of blowback to that because a lot of people felt like, I don't, obviously people are very sensitive about the idea of AI ingesting their images and using their artwork anyway. And Adobe has positioned their Firefly AI tool as an ethical approach to that, but also let's be honest, there is no such thing as a purely 100% ethical AI model. I mean, they can do, they, they, I do think Adobe is making an effort, but it doesn't mean it's going to be foolproof. But in any event, people got very upset about it, and Adobe has since clarified those terms of service. They've put out several statements trying to assuage all the anger over that. But there are people who said, that's it, Adobe has lost my trust, and there are better tools or at least equal tools out there, and I'm leaving Adobe, and that's it. And others who have said, I would love to leave Adobe, but I can't professionally. I need their products because they're so dominant. And so there's two sides to this particular story. On the one hand, I believe that this whole thing started because some people in legal, looking at the landscape around generative tools and the lawsuits and everything else that's still being decided there, and they thought that this update to the terms of service was some type of shield or at least a way to possibly offset some legislation or some type of litigation that might be coming their way. And people in the PR side or the marketing side did not properly evaluate it before it went out. And so this was a case of lawyers writing things that sound right to lawyers, but that are not properly formatted or explained for creators. That feels like what actually happened here. I don't really think that Adobe decided to just become extremely predatory because as happened, people look at this stuff and immediately reacted to it. So that's the one side, which is not to say I'm giving Adobe a free pass. I'm not, because this is the other side of it. I'm actually kind of glad this happened. This is actually, in some ways to me, a good thing, because Adobe is in an extremely dominant position in terms of creative tools. Yes, and I've talked about this before, and others have, there are other tools out there that come close to a lot of the things that Adobe does, and depending on what your use case is, maybe every bit is good or better, depending on what you're doing. But they also do operate in a position where there are very few legitimate competitors to everything that they offer. And just like a lot of other things, I've used this example with my iPad Pro multiple times, I don't like it when there's no competitor for something that I really like. Even though I like a lot of Adobe tools, I use many of them on a daily basis, I don't think it's a good thing that there is no one out there who feels like they are occupying the same space. Because when there isn't, that's when companies start to do things that are predatory, whether they really intend to or not, when there is no pushback, when there is no accountability, when there is no one else who might actually threaten their position, they do tend to start to do things that become anti-consumer. And so I'm glad that there was the immediate and loud response to this. I'm happy to see that Adobe responded to it and then just ignore it. But at the same time, it does once again highlight that when you don't have anybody else that occupies the same level of market share and mind space as something like Adobe or Apple or other companies, it's not good in the long term because they could easily have said, no, these are our terms and we're sticking with them and good luck going somewhere else. And they probably would not have lost as many people as may have, a lot of people will say that they'll leave, but I don't know what those numbers really would have looked like. So I'm glad Adobe responded the way they did. But again, it does highlight, one of the reasons I'm glad there was this vocal pushback is, there is nobody else I can think of that's like Adobe. And that's not a good thing. But at least in this case, I do think this was an oversight. I think this was an error, but it does raise a very real concern, which is if there's nobody else at the size of this company, then what real threat is there? I don't know, but I don't like it. Later.